Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. And today it's just me, just Kim. Grandma Gail is in Florida and I'm here in New York City. And, you know, I thought today I would try something new that I would just podcast on my own. And the idea is for you all to get to know me better. I feel like we need to have a heart to heart and really get to know each other on a deeper level. So today I'm going to share some stories that just made me the way I am today. So I'm 28 years old. I think the best thing to do is to go back to the very beginning to the year I was born, 1996. So I was born here in New York City. I grew up on the Upper East Side and my mom actually did as well. And my grandma did. And we were all in like a two block radius as well as my great grandmother who was alive at the time. So my grandma was very close to me while I was growing up. And my mom never left a three block radius her entire life. And she loves that that way. I remember my first birthday Well, I don't remember. I'm just told that my dad got all my friends Tickle Me Elmo toys, which was like the biggest toy of 1996. I have no recollection of this, but he still talks about it pretty much every day of my life that he was like the best dad ever because he got all the kids Tickle Me Elmos. I don't know. I'm just going to let him have it. Second birthday, I attended the 92nd Street Y for preschool really funny because actually a lot of my friends now went to preschool with me and we kind of like lost touch and then got back in touch later in life that school I remember was like harder to get into than college for a lot of people so starting off strong but kind of silly I think I for people who know I was in the purple room and the yellow room and maybe the green room something like that. Then I'm six years old. I go to Dalton for kindergarten. It was a great experience. I was there K through 12. So had a lot of the same friends for most of my life. Again, a situation of pretty much being harder than college. My kindergarten teacher actually had us raise chicks. And I remember this, her name was Sheila Cohn. I remember it very, very specifically that one time a chick was like unhatched and she opened it for everyone. That image is still in my head. I cannot get it out. So thanks, Sheila. I don't know what that really did to affect me later, but I feel like it altered my brain chemistry forever. That was also the same year my little brother was born. We are six and a half years apart. So he's not my, I mean, he'll always be my little brother, but he's like five times my size. So at the time he was cute. Okay. At seven years old, I definitely had a lot of friends. My house was the one that people went to after school to hang out, which was great. We would always go on photo booth and make like home movies and take a million pictures with all the different filters. Like remember, that was the first time green screen was a thing. Now on TikTok, we definitely take advantage of that. But that was very fun at the time to play with photo booth. I remember when I was eight years old, This one girl came up to me and was like, you have a unibrow. And that's when I started laser hair removal. And I have never stopped. That was really scarring. And I'll remember that forever. I was about to say her name, but I'm not going to do that to her. Around 10 years old, I definitely started coming out of my shell. I was like, I'm going to be an actress. Every recess, I would play with my two friends. And would be the director and would be the actress and was never making me the lead like he was the most beautiful girl in his eyes she was always the lead I was like a tree even though there was only two cast members and the one time I was the lead I was a cat in the hat on unclear what that meant But I always was like, to me, he is like the Steven Spielberg in my head. Like, I don't even think he works in entertainment anymore. But I'm like, this guy is the director. And the other day, actually, one of my girlfriends, who I'm still friends with, was like, oh, did you hear is gay? And I was like, no, my gosh, so happy that he came out. That's great. Uh, Crazy, though. I never would have expected that. Like, he always, like, I had such a crush on him. And he was always, like, 
you know, directing the plays and got so into it. And she was like, Kim, listen to what you're saying. He was directing the plays in 10th grade. I was like, or I mean, when you were 10 years old, I was like, yeah, fair. 11 years old. So around fifth grade, I want to say. I have my first major love. For the purposes of this podcast, I'm not going to say his name because I still hope that we're going to end up together. I think he actually is gay as well. <laughs> there's a there's a uh, bit of, of, the, of a theme here, but um, let's call him Ben Abrams. I don't know what movie I must have saw this in. It's like an every teeny bopper movie ever, but I would write in my notebook in school, Mrs. Abrams, Mrs. Abrams, Mrs. Abrams, all over. When I got home, I would like, my diary was just a shrine to him. I would probably recount every single thing he ever said to me. I remember once we hugged. That was such a big deal. Remember how big a deal hugging was? We would be like, did you hear that so-and-so and so-and-so hugged after school? Like that was huge. And even like one time in class, I remember we rubbed shoulders or like elbows and I couldn't get over it. So, you know, not as wholesome anymore, but those were the days. I think it was definitely an obsession with this guy. And we'll see at the 10 year reunion if he's there, cause that's coming up for me. Okay, at 12 years old, I pretended to be famous. I told everyone I was going to be in an upcoming Disney Channel show and no one believed me. And it was really traumatic, but I got all my girlfriends to get behind me. I'm like, we're tricking the entire grade that I'm going to be the next Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez, Demi Lovato. So I remember I had a pink little Sony digital camera and I, I must have figured out how to do Photoshop really, really poorly because I did a photo of me and Miley or the Jonas Brothers or someone and it had like a white background. It just was so fake. And I suddenly got people to start believing me. And I remember boys were like looking over my shoulder and be like, oh, cool. OK, like when's the show going to come out? And I was like, in a year or two, I got to buy myself time. And people started talking about me and they were like, this girl is going to be famous. Obviously didn't happen. I think I ended up telling them the truth like a year later when clearly the show did not come out. But I felt really proud that I can bamboozle people like that. I don't, I feel like that was really toxic, but at the time I felt good about it. 13, bat mitzvah year. I think I probably peaked. My favorite moment was actually, so the theme of my bat mitzvah was Seven Things, which was like Miley Cyrus's big song album that year. I think it was the breakout album. The song was Seven Things. And for the montage, which if you're not Jewish, at a lot of bar and bat mitzvahs, people will kind of show a slideshow of family photos, photos with their friends. And if you're going to take it up a notch, you would do a little like skit or something at the beginning of the montage. So for mine, we went to a like warehouse in Brooklyn or somewhere. It was a studio and recreated the seven things music video. I remember I had my seven or eight friends there and I was in braces, sparkly, silver, black, striped, forever 21 dress that looked like the one Miley wore in the video. And I turned around to them like so seriously, like, guys, there are professionals on this set. If you're not going to take this seriously, you can leave. And I was like in my element and really, really professional. Like, I think I took it very, very seriously and I think I realize that some part of this was my calling didn't end up a singer or in music videos but you know media world in front of a camera something there resonated with me that summer I went on my first teen tour before the teen tour stuff I went to camp my camp Trip Lake was very very strict one of my producers who's in the room with me now Eliza went there too Um, And she had the same experience I did. A lot of people felt community and they loved it. And I felt some of that. My mom went there as well. But overall, torture. I have stress dreams like once a week about like not getting to softball on time, having to pack my bag and not like packing the right things for swim. And I had to go back to the thing. And it was like I had asthma and I couldn't get across camp. Whatever. No one asked for this story. It was trauma to me. But... I never even made it to a camp social, which was like 
uh, dance with the boys camp because they made us do a t-shirt test where you would raise your hands above your head and if it went above your belly button you got sent back to your bunk this happened to me like I didn't even do it on purpose and they're like you're not allowed to go to the social so that sucked um and I really think the whole thing was quite ridiculous but I was very ex- excited for my first co-ed summer experience going on a teen tour that's where I had my first kiss in one of the hotel rooms and the guy told me that um I should use tongue more And that he couldn't hang out with me in public because I had weird friends. So great experience overall. Um, I think my friends, by the way, who I went with on that teen tour are two of my best friends still. They're very good family friends. And if that guy would rather hang out with Lindsay from Scarsdale High School, go ahead. I I encourage him to do that. But I uh, really didn't like that. And I'm sure that somehow framed my experience with men going forward. Like, I'm kissing you because I like you, not because I want to be told how I should be kissing better. It was my first time. I was 13, 14, whatever. Oh, also, I after Trip Lake, I tried one more camp where they fully bullied me. Yeah, I just think like summer, summer was not fun. Okay, 14, we're in high school. Super exciting because we got to have classes with older guys. We got to meet some new people. We had new people come in. So it wasn't just the same kids I had been with since kindergarten. One of my best friends, Lily, who has been on the podcast with her grandfather, Lily and Alan Patrikoff. uh, That's where I met her. We actually met in PE class. We were playing handball. We called it hand lol, like LOL, because we we thought for some reason that was very funny. She was very outgoing and she said, I'm going to try out for the school play. You should come with me. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm way too nervous for that. But obviously I always wanted to be an actress and I thought it would be fun in my soul I was just so nervous I was like I'll go to tryouts with you tryouts it's not a sport auditions clearly my acting career went really far at auditions I did my little thing I probably my little thing I did a monologue and (laughs) and I looked really really nervous I felt really nervous did not get in I remember walking out of the audition room and the, by the way, just to preface, everyone at my school, Dalton, was like professional actors in real life. Not everyone, a good, a good chunk of them. I was going against people who like are actually Broadway actors today. So when I'm walking out of the audition room, the theater teacher goes, by the way, Kimberly, there's a post-it on your cheek. And I like slap my face and I'm like, no, there's not. And he was like, your other cheek. And there was literally a post-it on my ass. And I was like, so inappropriate for a teacher to say. But also after I just clearly embarrassed myself during this audition, like you got to make it worse. The whole thing was just really um, awful. But it didn't stop me from trying out for the school play the next semester. And I did make it. I had one speaking role. I mean, a line. My parents still make fun of me because they're like, I'm Grandma Gail. Because they came to the show. They're expecting me to have a big part. All I did was like throw a roll across the stage. Like a fake piece of bread to the lead character. That was basically it. And I wore a blonde wig where you could see like my brown roots underneath. Looked really unattractive. So fun for me because I got to be part of the cast. And to me the cast. Like I didn't like the jocks in high school. I loved. They were actually called the artsy jocks. (laughs) Because everyone kind of did everything. But they were the boys who did theater. Obsessed with them. So my first boyfriend was one of the guys in the play. He was a huge actor. Also in real... not He was an actor in real life. He wasn't like A-list. Also kind of toxic in a lot of ways. But we definitely had a great time. The first time we made out was at the annual Halloween party that one of my girlfriends threw. Now by this time, my group of girlfriends have been coined the fine nine we did not make that name for ourselves i i wish we had because it's that embarrassing but we hadn't and one of the girls threw in her townhouse which was beautiful a like 200 person halloween party i remember we all took a photo before the nine of us and we looked so good i still have that photo somewhere i was a pink cowgirl probably my best halloween outfit because i had a whole hat and like a tight bodysuit and it was great 14 years old. First time alcohol was around as well. I don't think I drank, but I remember a lot of people were drinking and that just felt like different and the dynamics changed. I don't think anyone went to the hospital at that party, but definitely a few other times that year. And I remember 
the guy and I, I'm, I'm so scared to say people's names. The, this guy and I went into the bathroom and we made out and it was like really exciting. And then at the end of the night, the nine friends had a sleepover. We were all in our sleeping bags in her living room and we were changing into our pajamas. And one of my friends was like, Kim, what is all over your body? The guy who I made out with had like black hairspray because he was a rocker and it was just all over me. And I was like, this is so cool. And everyone was dying. And um, we went to bed like really, really happy that night. The weird things that we like think about that made us happy that we were excited about. Like now if a guy did that to me, I'd be like sending him my dry cleaning bill or something like I'd be pissed. But it was fun at the time. So then we're in high school, full fledged. I remember definitely interacting with a lot of older guys. There was this one guy who was so cute and I was hanging out at my locker and every day after class he would like come and talk to me at my locker. I remember one day he was like drinking a Snapple can. He like swug took a swig out of the bottle. It was like so early 2000s core, like the diet peach Snapple. And handed it to me and was like throw this out for me which again like what are with these boys and the confidence and the rudeness maybe it was just in my school but I think 14 15 16 year old boys need help anyway he hands me the bottle and like walks away and my weird ass self is like I'm gonna keep this bottle in my locker for the rest of the year and like I thank god no one knew until now because like, that is so weird to hide someone's Snapple. But like, why? It's like, because I his lips touched it. Like, I who knows? But that's the stuff I did. And I really hope someone relates to that and doesn't make me feel super weird. But we obsessed, you know, like crushes were obsessions. And that's something that I feel like I don't really have as much today. And when I talk to my friends about this, we're like, I wish we liked someone the amount that we liked people then. Because we want the butterflies like we want it to be like all consuming and when it's not that we're like do we like them like is this how it's supposed to feel why would we have felt that sometime in our life but not now so I'm hoping I feel like Snapple bottle level crush on someone one day but not yet okay by nearly the end of high school my favorite thing in school was creative writing. I was taking poetry classes and fiction classes. And one day my teacher asked me to see him in his office and he was like, are you okay? And I was like, this is really concerning because what am I writing about that he's like questioning my mental health? And it was usually just the way that I was talking about guys is almost like a pleasurable experience but also like painful and confusing and complicated and I the reason I'm telling you guys all these stories by the way I want there to be a full picture of the advice that I'm giving today when I'm having conversations with my grandma where I'm coming from so throughout this is sort of how I've been shaped and I think I'm a healthy person I think everybody just has their stuff and apparently at one point my teacher was concerned about it, but I think, I think I've come a long way since then. My first serious boyfriend was when I was 17. We dated for about four or five years, the rest of high school. And then, oh no, you know what? It must've been like three years. Cause I broke up with him right before college. Oops. Um, even though we went to the same college, he was nice <laughs> according to some people. No, I liked him. I think we were just super different. Then finally, I graduate, couldn't come any sooner, and go to Cornell. Um, great four years. I was very into the sorority life, uh, all the theme parties. I was in Delta Gamma. That was a pretty easy decision. I was I was between a few, but um, that's where most of my friends went, and it was great. I think that parties were hard in Ithaca at Cornell because. You couldn't just like leave when you wanted to. It was so hard to get a car. And if you were going to walk, it was like 45 minutes in a snowstorm to get home. And it was scary alone and it was freezing and you just didn't want to do it. So as an adult, I'm always so thankful that I'm like, if I'm not having fun, I can leave. Like I can get in an Uber and leave. I never felt that before. And that was just like a weird thing to feel like I'm either going to stay here and drink with everybody and like lean in or like 
be miserable. I don't know. But it was very fun while it lasted. I met my boyfriend who then, yes, I dated him for five years. I met him at the end of my freshman year. We dated all of college and then after college. And that was a great relationship. I know like on Instagram and stuff, people often ask me my longest relationship, if I've had a relationship. So yes, this was my longest relationship. Very healthy, great guy. He actually had family in Italy. So one summer we went to spend time with his family there. And I was the only one who spoke English. And that was like a really fun but shocking experience because I feel like now I understand Italian. Definitely can't speak it, but that was a very cool experience. In college, by the way, freshman year, I lived in the dorms and my grandparents, when they came to visit me like the first week, they visited a lot. We went and bought this like little rolly cart so because where we took our laundry was far from the dorm. So I would be all over campus in the snow with like a rolly grocery cart and people would look at me so weird. So that was my living situation freshman year. Sophomore year, I lived in the sorority house. Junior year, we lived in an apartment building somewhat near campus. And then my senior year, we lived in a house, 16 girls. I lived in the basement, which in hindsight was dumb. Um, I thought it was a good idea because I had first pick because I found the house for everybody and it had its own living room and bathroom. So I was like, and kitchen. So I was like, okay, I still get the privacy, but I get to be with everybody. But there were so many bugs and every single day I would squish the bugs and they would like scream. Like I would squish them and they'd be like, ah! and it was horrible. And I hate bugs more than anything in the world. So that was a bad living situation, but I was very ready to leave college. Graduation was great, except it was pouring rain. And if you're 2018 Cornell, you know this. It was like torrential downpour. We had no coverage. And I had to like change out of my white dress to go to the ceremony after the main ceremony. And it was drenched, like turned black. So I'm glad I had a backup white dress. Um, And after graduation, I worked at Cheddar, which is a news network, as a producer and reporter for about three or four years before doing excuse my grandma full time during that is when the pandemic hit so i spent a lot of time in new york the first year with my parents when the world was really shut down and then the second year when it was still pandemic life i lived went to live with my grandparents in florida and that's really catching you guys up to where you met me and grandma gail today obviously there's a million intricacies before that there's a million more details and stories That's really up to my 28-year-old self. Since then, I've been spending the winters in Palm Beach with my grandparents, and my parents are there as well. And the rest of the time here in New York City, and my grandma comes back as well. That's really me in a little tiny nutshell. I hope I gave you a little bit more insight into who I am, some of my dating experiences. Only after the pandemic is when I started doing my serial dating when I was living with Grandma Gail. I have a million stories from then of my like adult dating life. Um, If some of you are following me on social media, which I'm sure you are, you already know that I've been on now about almost 90 dates with 90 men since the pandemic or since my last relationship, which now you guys know about. There's a lot of stories there that maybe we'll get into in future episodes. If you liked this episode, please leave a comment where you're listening. I would love to know your feedback. Rate the podcast five stars if you haven't already, whether you're listening on Spotify or Apple and follow us on social media at excuse my grandma or me personally at Kim Merstein. Snapple hits just as good. I think I'm going to keep this one and I will talk to you guys soon.